Hi! In this video demonstration, we're going to take a look at another effect uh, for rendering in the camera uh, called motion blur. Uh, in the real world, whenever we uh, use our eyes or a camera to view action, uh, things taking place, uh, an effect happens whereas if something is moving at great speeds, uh, it tends to appear blurry. Uh, our cameras and our eyes just cannot keep up with uh, uh, a lot of stuff moving at, at high rates of speed. So, in the virtual world, if we want our scenes or our animations to uh, kind of take on a similar effect, uh, it can really add a bit of, uh, of realism to our to our animations and stuff like that. So I'm going to go over how to accomplish uh, motion blur using Mental Ray here uh, by doing a little experiment, a little demonstration. Uh, first of all, I got a brand new scene. First thing I want to do is go up to my render settings and probably at least load in uh, a preset. Uh, at very at very least, I want to make sure that that assign renderer is set to NVIDIA Mental Ray in the production slot there. Then I can go ahead and begin by creating a little bit of an animation just to uh, to get us going. I'm going to start with a box. I'm going to create a long, thin, kind of a board looking box here. We'll go over to our modify tab just so that we're all in the same place. Uh, and I will put in about 150 by 20 by 2 uh, for this board. Uh, mine kind of came out green, that works. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zero out by right clicking on these little sliders, uh, everything in my scene so that it's kind of hitting there right in the middle. Uh, if I turn my save frames on, I see with my final render so I can. Uh, Make sure everything's on screen here, and I'll hit G to turn off my grid there. Now, in order for motion blur to work, we have to have an animation. There's got to be something happening. There's got to be some action uh, in our scene. Even if your final version uh, in the end is going to be a still render uh, that you just want to look a little bit more realistic uh, as though action was happening, we've still got to actually create that action in the first place, because without it, it doesn't know what to blur. Uh, in the case of our board here, we're going to kind of create a, a little bit of a propeller spin uh, animation. It should be fairly easy, fairly straightforward, uh, and help us get going and observe this uh, effect on and off in a couple of different ways here. First things first, I've got my propeller. I'm going to get my rotate tool, and I'm going to make sure that I've got my angle snap toggle turned on because that's going to make my life a lot easier as I do this animation. Down toward the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my auto key here. And at frame zero, just to be sure everything's uh, kind of on the right page here, I'm going to go ahead and hit that key button just to set a keyframe. Then I'm going to move down to about frame 10 here. And I'm going to rotate this guy 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Auto key should automatically create a keyframe for us, and this is what we should see uh, happening here. One full half turn. Uh, from straight up and down to reversed. Then I'm going to turn my auto key off. Okay, uh, We're going to go into the curve editor here because it's going to make us uh, our animation a lot easier on us if we just use the curve editor to uh, cycle it. And we're going to go ahead and open up that mini curve editor and maybe I'll kind of uh, increase the size here just so we can see it a little bit easier. And down in the curve editor, I want to come down until I get to my box and I find the rotation on the y-axis. Because since that's the way we rotated it, uh, that's the only one I have to worry about. Uh, you should see your two keyframes along the timeline here. And we can drag a selection to grab both of them. We've got several tangents up here, which uh, you will either learn in an animation class or have already learned about. Uh, but the one we want to use is the one at the very end here. If we hover over it, it says Set Tangents to Smooth. Uh, go ahead and click that one, just so that our animation doesn't slow down or speed up uh, at all during this, and the propeller kind of just spins uh, nicely. Then with both of these keyframes still selected, we're going to go to the Edit menu, Controller, Out of Range Types. Uh, and in an animation class, you'll probably learn a lot more about these. But just to get this uh, rendering effect uh, taught, uh, we're just going to go through this a little quickly and set up the same or similar uh, results here. Let's go to Cycle, In and Out. Go ahead and turn the two little blue buttons on with the arrows uh, below Cycle and say OK, which means it's going to take that action and just repeat it over and over and over and over again. Uh, after this, we can go ahead and hit Close. And if I hit the Play button, uh, it'll look like our propeller just spins forever. Uh, and no matter how long I make my animation, it will spin uh, forever in this case. 
this will give us a good place to start. We've got some action, we've got some movement that we can really dig into and see how motion blur uh, works. Uh, what I want to do is, at this point, I'm going to get my move tool. I'm going to hold down shift and make a copy of this propeller. Uh, just say copy and we'll say OK there. So that what I've got are two propellers doing the exact same thing. One of these propellers we're going to uh, supply with the ability for motion blur and the other we are not, just to see the difference uh, and how everything kind of works. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit the, the front on my, my steering wheel cube here uh, and just you know, double check, we've got two propellers kind of spinning at you know, a medium pace uh, and that should, uh, that should give us a good place to start here. I could make a camera uh, just to be sure that I've, you know, I'm, I'm saving this, uh, this location and everything that's going on in it. But the next step that I want to do is go into my render setup. Uh, again, we've got the, the teapot button up here with a little dialog box in front of it as our render setup. F10 on your keyboard is your hotkeys. You'll probably start learning those uh, and using those more often. You can also get there by rendering uh, and then go to render setup. The motion blur settings are over on our renderer tab. Uh, along with, you know, great things like our, our sampling quality, uh, any aliasing stuff. Uh, I like to set mine to the filter Mitchell, uh, as well as, you know, we can go to the recommended here, and I want to increase my quality at least to probably 1.0 for this, otherwise it'll look speckled, uh, just like our depth of field blur did. Uh, and then we're going to come down to the camera effects. Uh, the very, very top settings uh, you're going to find for motion blur. We're going to click to enable motion blur. Default, it's got this other checkbox here that says blur all objects. Now, this is great if you do want everything in your scene to have this effect applied to it, uh, including things like camera movements and all that other great stuff. For our purposes, it's not so great because we want to see the effect on one of them and we don't want to see the effect on the other. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that box here, which means I need to turn it on at the object level here. One of these needs to have it, one of these needs not to have it. So I'm going to select our first one, our original one. I'm going to right click on it to bring up that quad menu and we're going to find the object properties in the list there. It'll open up this nice big large dialog box with a bunch of settings which we've seen before uh, but we're going to come down to the bottom right hand corner on that general tab uh, where we've got motion blur. It's default enabled uh, and we've got two types of motion blur to deal with. One is image which means it's going to use a, a post effect to add the blur after it's finished rendering. It's a little less exact, but a little faster. The other is object, which is more exact, uh, but a little bit slower. We're going to go ahead and use object. It's always kind of the better uh, end quality one to use. So we'll select object and say OK. Likewise on the other one, just to be sure, just to show you, we're going to right click, go to object properties, and make sure none uh, is enabled on there. We're actually going to uncheck the enabled box completely too, just to be on the safe side and make sure that this one does not have any motion blur applied to it at all. Then we'll say OK. From here, we go back to our render setup and take a look at some of these settings here. Uh, these settings can uh, can be a little changed. We're going to go into our, our you know spin here, maybe about to frame 8. Uh, just so that we're, we're a good way through our, our movement, right? They look diagonal, but we know that they're in the middle of rotation here. And I'm going to go ahead and do a, a fast render here. We're going to see how motion blur is working right off the bat. Uh, we've got a little bit of blur happening on the first one, and this one looks like it's a, you know, still image where this board's not moving at all. Uh, the motion blur effect immediately kind of takes hold here uh, with our anti-aliasing settings set up to a quality of one. It's not even a terribly speckled here. So now that we've seen how this begins to work just by turning it on, let's take a look at the settings. Uh, the first settings that we've got uh, up in here are the shutter duration, the frames. And what this is talking about is how many frames uh, between that we want it to blur. Right now it's using a half a frame here. Uh, which is not very much at all, which is why our blur is just, you know, kind of in between one little bit or one little frame's worth of a rotation, uh, half and half there. Uh, if we increase this number, let's say we want it to blur between a full five frames and hit our render button again, we end up with a much more extreme effect. 
Now, if this was to be, let's say, a propeller on, a, on an airplane or something along those lines, uh, this one's going to be much more desirable than the last one. If we want this to be a fairly subtle effect, uh, then we're going to have to uh, reduce that shutter duration time. Uh, you know, anywhere in between. So at five here, we see something is majorly happening. We're blurring between five full frames before and after uh, of different locations, right? Between these five frames, the the object, our board, uh, goes from this direction all the way to this direction and then blurs it in between. Now, something that you're going to notice right off the bat is this thing's spinning in a circular pattern, but it's blurring as though it's a straight line between these two frames, uh, which is very unrealistic. Uh, and we need to kind of correct that. Uh, our second shutter offset, rarely do I ever even bother changing this. This is kind of a set to a default value that, that works pretty pretty well. Uh, so we're going to skip over that one. And we're going to come down here to the third one, which is our motion segments. The higher this number goes, the more accurately the blur is going to follow the path that the object is actually set on. So right now it's set with a motion segment of 1 default, and everything is very, very straight. If I increase this to 5 and do another render, uh, we should notice that our, our blur is now following that path. It's actually doing some calculations in between here now, uh, left and right, and we're getting more of that round uh, look to our propeller blur or our helicopter blade or whatever this may end up being in the future. So the higher our motion segments go, the more accurate it's going to be, also the longer it's going to actually take uh, for our render to finish up. Uh, and we're going to end up with very, very nice round followings here. Uh, the final setting uh, is grayed out for us in later versions of Max, the time samples down here. And that's because up here at the top we've got a sampling mode now to deal with. Uh, whereas we've got unified ray traced, which is our recommended settings now. Uh, but in the past, it was always uh, this guy, classic ray traced. If we go ahead and change to classic, uh, some of our anti-aliasing settings change how they look and how they work a little bit. But also our time samples down here uh, gets unhighlighted so that we can actually adjust this thing. Uh, these time samples uh, are going to give our blur a little bit more of a higher quality. If we change this time sample to, let's say, 20 uh, in this method and then do a render, we're going to see that interpolation of our speckled kind of blur uh, gets a little bit more smoothed out or accurate uh, over time, whereas if we do, let's say, a 1 and then do our render, we're going to see a lot more of that uh, intermittent speckling happen there. Uh, so that's just one way to get gain a little bit more control over the quality of that blur, uh, but again, every time you adjust that, you know your your blur is going to end up a little, bit, you know, a little bit nicer, but it's also going to take a little bit longer to render each time here. So fairly simple idea, uh, but that's motion blur uh, in a nutshell, and uh, will allow you to uh, fiddle around with these settings uh, and make sure that uh, you're getting exactly what you truly need out of that blurring effect uh, in uh, scenes with some high action, uh, you know, and likewise we change some settings around and get uh, different every time uh, depending on the effect that we truly want. Uh, and remember, this is going to be animated in the end, so we're going to see some changes and some things happen here that uh, uh, might be pretty interesting uh, versus our perfectly crisp and clear board over on the right hand side here that is terribly dull and kind of fake looking because it doesn't do what our eyes and cameras do naturally. Okay?